Hey guys, welcome back to the Past Money Plan. Today we're going to be talking about important aspects to be looking at when you are investing in mutual funds. And we'll go ahead and explain what a mutual fund is uh, and how it uh, is different from index funds, as you've probably heard and stuff like that. But Kirby, do you want to start this off? Yeah, I mean, some caveats to this is it's amazing. There's a study out there that says 90% of the people that invest in 401ks don't know what they're investing in. So a 401k is just like a brokerage account. It's just like a checking account. It's just an account. When you put money into a 401k, it goes into that account. And then that money in that account is invested into something. So don't think your money is just sitting there gaining interest from a bank. It's invested in an avenue. So it behooves you to know what you're invested in. Even the same thing with the Roth IRA, traditional IRA, brokerage account. You should know what you're investing in. I don't care if you invest the money yourself or if you have, you know, you have your guy or you have that uh, money manager for you. You should still know what you're invested in. And when you're investing in mutual funds or what have you, and that's what 99% of people that's in 401ks and Roth IRAs, you know, you have people like Alex that, you know, they have the Roth brokerage accounts and they do individual stocks. They feel that they're going to hold for a long time to, um, you know, give it to the kids because, you know, the kids going to steal all your money anyway. But in the end of the day, it's important aspects that you're, you're supposed to look at to know what you're investing in. And I'm, we're going to explain why these aspects are important. We're not going to go over every line item. We're just going to point out the key things that you should look at as somebody, like it or not, you're an investor. That's so what you should look at as an investor of what you what you own or what you should own or where you need to change or update your portfolio in that aspect. And usually most 401ks are not actively managed. They are passively managed, meaning you just put your money into a mutual fund that do, do whatever it depends on. Most people just use the default investments that their uh, their employer puts them in. And, you know, my adage, if your employer wanted you to have a lot of money, why would they want you to have a lot of money? Because if you have a lot of money, then you can leave the job. So they put you in something that you feel happy with, but all in all, you're getting screwed over. So with that being said, I'm going to share my screen. If Alex, give me that ability. And then I'm going to share this screen. And today we're going to talk about Alex. Let me know when you can see this. Yep. See it? Yep. See so it. you see the Morningstar website? Yep. All right. Perfect. All right. So Morningstar, everybody can go to this. The only thing you got to do is go to Google. And again, we're not financial advisors. And actually, we're just showing you what we do. If you choose to mimic it, that's on you. But uh, it's worked out for us in the long term. So we're just going to dive right into it. But again, talk to your financial specialists or financial accountants or CPAs or whoever you may use. But for the people that don't have them, like I said, it's don't ever think that you have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to follow successful people that has done it. And then you just go on that same blueprint that they've already provided. But I'm not saying you need to follow, but these still are important aspects of a mutual fund that you need to look at. So this one right here, FXAIX, I'm just going to be fully transparent. The reason why I'm using this mutual fund, because this is one that I am invested in. This is the Fidelity 500 Index, FXAIX is the ticker symbol. As you see, it is a five-star rated mutual fund. It goes... Morningstar rates mutual funds from one to five stars. This is the five star. So things that you want to look at. I mean, you can look at the performance and growth. That's all cool. But some things you want to look at is you want to look at the, the investment that you're in compared to the index. So this investment here in 2023, it went up 32 percent. This uh, the index went up 33.2%. So this did a little better than the index. And the index is just the market. Like I said, it's hard for 84% of money managers and mutual fund managers cannot even beat the index. So if you can't beat the index, 
then why not just invest in the index? If these people can't beat the index, why not just invest in the index? And this is what this fund is, just the fund that's indexed to the S&P 500. All right, and then so we go to the, uh, you know, it goes over the different years, yada, 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 explaining, like even in 2022, the end of the S&P 500, it actually dropped 19.5%. This dropped 18.13%, which was a little better. Year to date, year to date today, the S&P 500 index is, at, is up 18.59%. This investment is up 18.41%. So you want to have something that's close to the index and is tracking the index. If it's performing way below the index, then there's a problem. So that's the first thing you want to look at. And then you can look at it over a longer term frame. This investment over 10 years is the average 12.48 percent. The index itself, S&P 500, has averaged year over year over the past 10 years, 12.28 percent. So over a long term, this index is let's just say on par with the index itself. The stock market index in general over 15 years is 11.19%, but this fund itself hasn't been out that long to and capture the 15-year the fifteen year range. Uh, so that's one thing you want to look at, how it performs against the index. You can go categories and all that, but how it performs against the index is huge because if you're underperforming, if you're in a mutual fund that's underperforming the index, you need to find a, a fund that's in the index so you can just, you know, at least mimic it. All right. The, next, the other thing you want to look at is uh, price fees, management fees, management fees, management fees, management fees. A lot of these default investments that the employer puts their their um, employee in, like these target this target um, investment funds, what it is, it have an expense ratio on the target fund. So the target fund, let's say it has a 1% management fee. And if you do the math, if you work for, you know, let's say 40 years, 1% a year, that's 40% of your money went to management. As you see here in this fund, 0.02% goes to management fees. Another thing with management index fund, so this fund here is invested in stocks, and we'll get to that in a second, but this is invested in stocks. But the target, the target management funds, on top of that 1% management fee for being in the fund, those target management funds are invested in other mutual funds that have management fees also. So majority of the money that you're putting into the 401k, if you're in those target funds, are going to management fees either in the whole fund you have here or the other individual funds that the target management fund is invested in. So that's where a lot of your capital is going into. Alex, do you have anything before we keep going on? No, nope. go ahead. No, nope. okay. And then so, and then we're gonna go back to performance. And then this is the last thing that you wanna, wanna look at. Wait, I went to, wait, performance, risk, price, all right, portfolio, sorry. That's where we wanna go, portfolio. And the portfolio is explaining to you, and this is going to go back into what I was saying about what the stock, I mean, what the fund is actually holding. So this right here, this right here gives you a list of the top stocks that's in the mutual fund. Like I said, in the target retirement fund, the holdings are another mutual fund that has a management fee, another mutual fund that has a management fee, another mutual fund that have a management fee. And it just keep going down like that into the emphasis of mutual funds that have a management fee. So on top of the management fee you're paying for the initial fund, like a target retirement 2050 fund, is you're paying a fee there. And then you're also paying fees in the individual investments that's in here. But as you see with the S&P 500 index fund, you have the lowest possible management fee there is. And it's investing in individual stocks that does not charge you a fee for being in there. And then so in this one, you have, you know, the creme of the creme stocks. You got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, NVIDIA, Alphabet, which is Google for people that don't know, Meta Platforms, which is Facebook for the people that don't know, Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett, Tesla, Elon Musk, United Group, and so on and so forth. So that's 
what this is invested in. And then this right here will break it down to uh, different subcategories, you know, basic materials, consumer cyclicals, uh, financial services, real estate, and it breaks it down what percentage of the portfolio is invested in each one of these. Now, what I'm going to try to do, and I don't know of any, so I can, so like here, I found a target retirement fund, VFIFX, and it's four out of five stars on the morning star. And then this is things that we want to look at. Now, remember, we is at 12, 13% for the uh, S&P 500 index. Now, this over a 15-year period, or since, since uh, you know, the earliest days, it's only averaged 7.32%. Now, the we'll get to the expense ratio in a second, but so this is, let's say, 5% 5, 5 uh, over 5% per year less than the uh, S&P 500. And this target date, so this retirement date is for 2050. And then, so now we go to the uh, portfolio here, and then, okay, we can go to price first, sorry. All right, then we go to price here first, just like we did with the other one. It's, it's 0 0.08, that's what the fund is, it showed it on the performance side. All right, so when you get to, when you get to price, all right, the target management fee right here, uh, minimum investment is a thousand bucks. For the investment side, the net net expense is 0 0.08. The load is another 0 0.58, right? That's the that's the average there. And then they say no management fees, no management fees here. So then now let's go to portfolio. Okay, so now the portfolio. Now look, this portfolio is in other stocks. Other stocks, other, I mean, other mutual funds, other mutual funds. So let's see what, let's see if we can pull up this mutual fund here. So then it's another expense ratio here for every fund that your money's going into. And then this thing just hit me with an advertisement. That's not what the plan was there. But this fund just hit me with the advertisement. But every fund that, every mutual fund that this is in, now you see some is holding US dollars, but every fund that it's in, it's another uh, expense ratio in there. And then as you see it right here. So these expense ratios add up also. So they're charging you for being in this fund. And then the money you allocate to this fund is going to these funds that's charging more money per each one. And this right here is Vanguard. So it has some of the lowest expense ratios. And most people don't have Vanguard in their 401k and things like that. They have, you know, they have the fidelity, they have the principal and things like that. And their expense ratio is higher. So on top of paying the on top of paying the expense ratio for being this fund, your money is allocated to other funds that charge you expense ratios on top of that. So that's what I mean by understanding what you're in, because a lot of 401ks, a lot of 401ks averages about four or five percent a year, like we did a short video about, because the expense ratios, because most people are in target retirement funds, these expense ratios is charging everybody over and over and over again. And then it's eating up your 401k match, is eating up the money that you're putting in there. And then next thing you know, you look up and then you're 65 and you wonder where the hell is all the money? All the money went to these institutions like Vanguard, like Fidelity, like Charles Schwab, and all these other people that's holders or creators or managers of mutual funds. So just understanding what to look at is very key and to knowing where your money's going. Like so, like I'm saying, you know, if you got one that has a 1% expense ratio and then it's invested in a whole bunch of mutual funds, and this one has a low number of mutual funds, but I've seen one with 20 and 30 different mutual funds and the expense ratio is just out the wazoo. And then you wonder where's all the money going, why you're not appreciating and you hear the stock market went up 13% a year and you're only appreciating 5% a year is because you're in something like a target retirement fund. And then again, we went far out as 2050 because how a target retirement fund works is in the earlier years, they take more risk and then use bonds. And then in the later years, they use more bonds, more safe, secure stuff, and then uh, less in equities. But right now, as you see, 99% of the holdings in this is in equities. Only 1% is in bond. That's why we went out to 2050. And so even when it's all in equities, 99% in equities, 
it's not even matching the market. It's coming in at 7% return uh, per year when the market is coming in at you know 12% return per year. So you're losing there as far as the return. Then you're losing on the expense ratio. And then over time, that stuff compounds, just like compound interest. The expense ratios compound, compound, compound. And the next thing you know, you're sitting there with a 5%, 4% return year over year for the 45 years. And then you don't have enough money to retire. And Alex, do you have something before I hit my closing? Nope. All right, Alex, I don't have anything. So what, what I'm trying to uh, say is, you have to be responsible for your money. Don't sit there and believe that, oh, just because you're in any old regular smegular mutual fund that you're going to be fine. You have to know what to look at. Even if somebody else is investing your money, you need to know what you own because nobody cares about your money more than you. So with all that being said, please hit the like and subscribe button, comment in the comment section below on anything that I might miss or anything else you want to learn about. And we will do a video about y'all have a good day and we will see you on the next video. See you guys.